this week, Dark Phoenix soars into the theaters. We waited to drop this so that we can talk about it without spoilers on today's show. And Tom the Goddamn King <laughs> is joining Eva DuVernay for New Gods. I am made of excitement. What is this nerd life? <laughs> so we won't have spoilers, but we will have foul language. You've been yeah. warned in <laughs> retrospect. Welcome back to Collider Heroes. This is issue 308, episode 308, whatever we call it. I'm Amy Dallin. I'm Corey John Rowe. And we are joined once again by one of our very favorite guests. Hey, Dorian. What's up, guys? Thank you for having me. This is my first time on the new iteration of the show, the 20-minute show. I'm excited about it because I don't like to talk a lot, so we can just <laughs> get me in and out without any issues here. Dorian's like, do I have to do things and talk to <laughs> you? Does it talk of the show? What is a talk show, Dorian? I guess. I guess, man. I guess. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We are delighted to have you back, and we have all seen, but are not going to spoil, uh, the brand new Fox Marvel joint, Dark Phoenix. Yep. Uh, it is, we, if you're watching this Wednesday, it's because we had to delay to meet that embargo so that we can talk about the newest X-Men film, putting the capper on going on 20 years yep. of the Fox X-Men universe, which has been so tremendously important to me, to you, Koi, yeah. to like the comic book world. If you like comic movies, and if you're watching the show, unless you're lost, you like comic book movies, you owe X-Men, Blade, and Spider-Man a great deal of love, as well as Superman and Batman from those era. But, but I consider X-Men in 2000 what really evolved from Blade being a comic book movie disguised to we're a comic book movie, mm -hmm. and then it evolved to where we are now. And I think this evolution was, was special, and I think, no spoilers, but I think that it's still a mutant movie more than it is an X-Men movie, and that's always been my problem with these movies, but I did enjoy this substantially more than I expected. Uh, the, the trailers definitely painted it a certain way, and I do think word of mouth was really tricky on this one because we heard, it, if this happened before the internet, we wouldn't have heard about it, the reshoots. The release date wouldn't have been as much of a thing. The conversation mm. wouldn't have been as much of a thing, but obviously that's not the case, so we had a certain amount going into it, and I, I think honestly it helped me because the expectations I had were low enough that I really had a good time. Uh, it has its flaws. It certainly not Logan, it's not X2, but it's something that caps off the franchise better than Apocalypse. I'm glad this is the ending. Yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head with that. Like, going in, there was so like so much against this. Like, every the word of mouth, like, the, the, the marketing. I felt like, yeah, it was just... I, my expectations were super low, and all I was asking for was just be better than Apocalypse. Because even a lot of people had issues with Apocalypse. I I thought it was fine. Like I like it wasn't the worst superhero movie. So I was like, just be better than Apocalypse, <laughs> and that's all I asked. And going like like after I finished it, I was like, okay, I was pleasantly surprised with I didn't hate it. And also I felt like there was a, like just the universe on top of was everything was going against this. Even the art theater was going against this. Like <laughs> we should mention yeah, extenuating yeah. circumstances. All three of us. <laughs> to see this movie again because we were in if y'all were on Twitter last night you might be aware or Monday night uh, you might be aware that a whole lot of the folks that you follow or listen to who watched this movie had kind of an unusual experience with it uh, we were at a press screening which was a delightful place to be and unfortunately there was a fire alarm the good news is everyone is safe uh, but it was uh, mildly disruptive. I learned so last night. So we're all going to see it again. I definitely learned last night that I would die for a comic book movie because I didn't move. Yeah, we, like, no, I, no. I, I was sitting there and I was like, this goes against everything I've been taught in my entire life and yet I'm not moving because X-Men is on. We're so for what it's worth... If podcast listeners will know that Koi is forging a bold path into bad advice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> don't sleep, do crimes, and stay still if there's a fire alarm. Just do the opposite of whatever Koi says to do on the show. But I also sat in my seat, so no points for Chaotic me. Chaotic good, lawful good. I'm just balancing the scales Got here, it. folks. We're making sure the internet knows you can find a balance between lawful choices I mean, and chaotic choices. I looked at a security guard and to see if they were panicking, and they weren't. So that was my... Okay. And, um, and without... So and without spoiling anything, like when the fire alarm actually came off, like the scene made sense for there to be alarm. So I was chilling. I was like, okay, this is this is fine. And then it went to another scene. And I was like, wait, why? What? Why is this noise still here? Yeah, is this like a dangerous. Bad? It was yeah. an action scene, and we can talk about uh, that. That like, there's a lot of fun action in here. There's sure. a lot of uh, like, you know, there's always going to be an element for me where I'm just happy to see these characters. I'm happy to see these. Uh, like incredible actors playing these characters, uh, and every time you give them basically anything to do, I am excited. There um, was a on moment a basic level. where I was not even acknowledging a movie was happening. There was a moment that I was fully like, "The X Men are here," hmm. and I didn't remember that from Apocalypse. So that's why this, no matter what, is better than Apocalypse for me because I was fully enthralled in my X Men are here, and I've been wanting for a 
universe that felt like the X-Men, but I wanted these characters that have been the X-Men I've grown up with to get a good send-off. And I think that it at least should be seen for that. And it also, it gave characters that haven't had a lot of time to shine some time. Uh, yeah. I, I have some bias because Alex Ship is awesome. Uh, every time Storm is on screen, I was so excited. And Storm has not had a lot of time on screen historically in 19 years. And she could have had more here, but when she was there, it felt like Storm. Cyclops got some Cyclopsy moments, and he has historically also not gotten those. So there were things that I felt like Simon Kinberg realized the fans wanted, that comic fans wanted. And I have to say, there are frames in this that are 100% a Jim Lee comic. There are The way it's shot is maybe my favorite part. Some of the action's a little hectic, but there are some emotional scenes. One I'm p- thinking in particular, which I'll say in the spoiler review but there's an action drama shot that is a Jim Lee panel push in and there are so many moments where it goes like action 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 comic 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 action 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 that you can tell he loves the comics and that really made me happy and really surprised me because as a first time director that's a very bold choice to take mm. and I like like you said I thought I'm glad that the, the storm the cyclops nightcrawler yeah. Yeah, yeah nightcrawler I'm like apocalypse didn't do like they did not do him justice but there was like their introduction this was them like coming into the roles and even Alexander Ship like touched on it she said this was the first movie that we actually are coming into our characters we're we don't have to like follow the people that were playing the roles before him like mm-hmm. these are our own characters so to finally see them like go into the roles like seeing Storm like I think there's a clip online already it's not a spoiler or anything just you, you actually get to see her utilize her powers like the way Holly Berry used to so to finally see those uh, uh, incarnations of these characters finally be badass it was it was like beautiful I think this had some of the best action scenes from like the the, the franchise itself some of the the better action scenes like I without spoiling the train scenes oh man like it it, it was fire. I got to say, I, I was blown away by some of those scenes. Like the, the story itself, yeah, had a couple of flaws. But when I sat back and just looked at what was going on, I was like, all right, OK, this is this is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm, I'm, I'm content. There is a bittersweetness to the fact that getting to watch them be a team uh, and go into action is, is very much what we've all wanted. And to uh, what you alluded to with the factors kind of working against this movie, knowing that we don't get more made it like it sort of be like, oh, would, would love just this movie had a big task to take on, to take what had sort of just begun to maybe potentially become a team mm-hmm. uh, and tell the entire rest of their story in one mm-hmm. movie. And I don't know that I feel it was totally successful at that, but I don't know how you could have exactly. So I, I feel bad saying, like, do this impossible thing that I'm requesting of you, movie. <laughs> do all of it in one. Do perfect justice to, to Chris Claremont and John Byrne uh, while also doing perfect justice to 20 years of the Fox X-Men universe. And the truth is that that was going to always be a big ask. Uh, so I, when we when we'll, we'll get into it more with spoilers, but but that's kind of a, a broad strokes. I would say you do want to see this to like if you have if you have followed this saga the way we have, if it is meant to you what is meant to us, you are going to want to see this. I don't know if this was your first uh, like maybe. You, I'm not sure I would be like, everyone on the street, rush out and catch this. Although it does work as a standalone narrative. And I do, mm-hmm. you know, I'm never mad about spending time focusing on Jean Grey ever in my life. I'm incapable of being mad about that. Uh, so I don't know. Mixed feelings. And I thought Sophia Turner did a, a good job as Jean Grey. Like, I, I, I was a little nervous at first. Like, can she, like, not necessarily lead, lead the movie, but, like, can she, like, hold hold that all together? And I thought throughout the whole movie she was, she was fine as Jean Grey and slash for, uh, as a phoenix there's also moments of michael fassbender where he says like a line i'm like god damn man and i forgot <laughs> they have that, an like, absurd cast I, it, it's the movie's cast is insane it's also balancing what's effectively now not three different x-men teams but two but it was the brian singer x-men team the first class x-men team and this new iteration of x-men team and this movie finally feels like we've left behind the old guard and we've firmly established this movie just as it ends but the cast is fully in this and when Michael Fassbender gets to Fassbender it up, I was so invested and I was so in. And there's some moments, it's interesting, it's, it's really comic-y in some ways and super not comic-y in others, but I can't really reveal any of that till the spoiler review. <laughs> I can say that you should see it. If you, if you, once again, if you watch the show, you're invested in comic book properties, and if you're invested in comic book properties, it is definitely worth your time, and, and check it out. Oh, and I will say, I love the uniforms. Mm. I might be alone on this. 
It's not. It's not that I didn't. I. I, I think these uniforms are awesome too. But when, at the end of Apocalypse, <gasps> they when we got. The yeah, when we when the, when, at the end of Apocalypse, when you saw those fire ass uniforms, like each individually stylized <laughs> to those characters, I was like, all right, I can't wait to see these in action in the next movie. And then we go to the like they're I, they're they're cool. They're Grand fine. Morrison, they're, yeah, that's they're, good. They're, I'm not mad. At, I'm not mad about them. But I would have I would have liked to at least seen like one or two scenes with them in their original outfits. I, I think it would have been cool like to have them in like the first 15 minutes, like and show them in that scene. But it, it's cool. Like. I'm, I'm fine with those uniforms. I would have just liked a little tease from what we saw at the end of Apocalypse. It's like, don't set that up if we're not going to get yeah. the reward. And as know. always, I love to hear what you guys think. So tweet us because, like, you're, you're going to be seeing this this week. I want to know what you guys think because next week we're going to go full spoilers. Yes. But for this week, I just want to input. Let us know what you think. Next week, we're going hard. We're diving yes, yes, in. Yes, yes, yes. And, Corey, uh, where else can they check out if they want to hear some thoughts on Dark Phoenix? Well, uh, there's this lovely actress named Alexandra Ship who plays Storm. And uh, she is absolutely darling. Uh, <laughs> and we went comic book shopping, and she knows about Barry Windsor Smith's arc on Storm. She knows Claremont. She knows OG. She knows Storm. And I was so excited to talk to her about all this. And we actually have a little clip for you guys. I'm Koi Jandro. We are here at Golden Apple Comics in the heart of Hollywood, right on Melrose, and I am here with Alexandra Ship. Yes, Storm herself. One day <laughs> it's gonna work. What? <laughs> Isn't what? that incredible? Rain I gotta read robbers. this. I'm gonna figure out Study the logistics. Up. Oh, I'm so ready. You. So that was awesome. That looks so much fun. Oh my gosh. Very darling. Very darling. And there's more. Uh, we also have uh, a review from myself and Perry where we dive into X-Men itself. So tons of exciting X content hey. coming right at you. We also got a chance this week to talk to uh, one of our very favorite nerds uh, who has uh, worn many hats in the entertainment industry over time but has just directed his first feature film. Uh, check out our conversation with Seth Green. I'm curious, uh, watching that as a lifelong nerd, watching this change over time, what has been your perspective on the last couple decades of all this stuff exploding and having so many more people to talk to about the stuff that we've always loved? <laughs> well, I mean, I certainly appreciate that all the things that I got my ass kicked over loving in, in grade school have now become the most financially viable <laughs> IP on the planet. Like that definitely <laughs> is somewhat reassuring that I spent my time in earnest and not in vain through through that whole thing. But but all of this evolution is just culture understanding over a long period of time that these characters, these stories can be represented in whatever shape or tone serves the character or story best. And that's what I like. So, you know, I, I grew up um, watching reruns of the 60s Batman, mm -hmm. and that was the best version of Batman you were going to get on film. By the time the Michael Keaton Batman came out, you were like, oh, cool. Tim Burton has enough leeway to tell a sort of dark and artistic interpretation of this character. So then when Nolan puts out that Batman, culture is ready to receive something that is more dark, a little more investigative of human condition. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're you can even look at it through Spider-Man. So mm -hmm. each of the versions of Spider-Man that we've gotten culturally has just been what the the world is ready to absorb at the time. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that any one is much better than the other, because at the time they were all really good. Like when I saw the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, I was like, I can't believe we're living through a time <laughs> where this is possible. And now you can go back and say, okay, well, the best interpretation of Spider-Man is as a teenager, so you get to see him as a kid. You get to see him make the mistakes. Like you're, you're not jumped into a world where he's already abandoning all of his attachments and you know, refusing to love anyone. It's, yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's a great, it's just a great time, guys. That was such a fun conversation. Yeah, he's in the nerd world as deep as it gets, and he loves all the content, and I'm just, I'm excited as always. And you can check out Changeland this weekend. It is out in theaters. Uh, it's one of my 10 favorite movies of the year. Oh. We don't have time for me to fully dive into it. Changeland <laughs> is incredible. Please see Changeland. It is the exact kind of movie that balances out X-Men. Like, the scales. It's so good. It's so heartfelt. It's so loving. It is incredible. Ch Changeland. The rest of the interview is available now over on our interview channel. And in the meantime, while you're waiting for that movie, while you're waiting for Dark Phoenix, read some comics. What do we got mm. this week, Coy? Well, this week is another incredible week in comics. Our very first pull is one you have been loving for quite oh, some time. it's finally now in, in trade. trade. You need to read Die. It is goth Jumanji D&D &D madness. 
it uh, combine all those things in your head. Dorian's making an amazing face right now. The first trade paperback is out. Uh, Kieran Gillen and Stephanie Hans did this. You also want to check out uh, our next news story will tie in. We'll come back to this one. Female Furies, number five, for that uh, disturbing but amazing New God's goodness. And also one we both pulled. This was on both of our poll lists. Criminal number five. If you're not reading Criminal, it's been out for years, but it's different anthologies. It's different chunks. So you can pick up very many first issues. And this and is this a new storyline this week in Criminal number five. Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, as always, killing it on that book. Don't let the five jar you. It is a new issue. Now, Savage Avengers is number two. And Savage Avengers, we're going to talk about it for an hour in Giant Size Heroes. Just this <laughs> issue. So you'll see. And the next part of Marvel's big storyline, War of the Realms number five, is out this week. If you cannot get enough of the crazy Norse action that Jason Aaron is bringing you in his decade-long epic, cannot stress this enough, Jason Aaron is doing such amazing things. Okay, comic book pull list. Anything on there jump out at you, Dorian? Um, the first one, you just, the die, that one just got me the pitch you just gave. So I'm, I'm kind of interested in that. I've been, and the criminal one as well. So I might give those a chance. I've been starting to read a little bit of Swamp Thing since oh, it's, yeah. you know, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm getting into that now just because of the the show my baby crystal reads on so you know i gotta, <laughs> I gotta support her so that's that's what i'm doing right now but definitely die I'm, I'll, I'll think i'll give that one a shot excellent We're and great shout out <laughs> swamp thing they're basically you can't go wrong with swamp thing there are some fantastic runs out there which which one do you know if you're I, are you looking at I do not. is it like 80s is it recent is it, it i think it's recent it's on the dc universe nice app, nice so nice i just clicked and started reading but I we are love it. big DC Universe fans. I'm a little biased. I get to do a show over there where I tell you to read Swamp Thing. So it all works out really well. I'm not over there and I can tell you, holy crap, having comms on the same app as watching stuff is the great move. Do it. <laughs> do it more. Speaking of great moves from DC, <sighs> this news story had to be one of our majors because it is the coolest and just most, it feels left field like it should have been obvious, but nobody called this until Ava DuVernay tweeted a picture of herself with Tom King, Eisner winning author of Mr. Miracle and Batman and so many other good stuffs and said, ready to write new gods, buddy? And the victory dancing that Koi is doing just off camera here uh, <laughs> began for all of us because this is the coolest team up. Ava DuVernay and Tom King are going to co-write DC's new gods movie. What is this going to be? What are we looking forward to here? And which off-the-wall partnership do you hope comes next? Mm. So I haven't been this excited since they announced Bendis and Tim Miller were going to make a Kitty Pride movie. And since that can't happen now, I am so excited because <laughs> Tom King, his Batman, brought me back. I read almost every DC title now because I discovered this Batman and then I just, it expanded. It was crazy. And his Mr. Miracle came later. I, I jumped on Mr. Miracle way late. I just read Mr. Miracle like two months ago. It's and a miniseries. The whole thing is out now. You can read it. It is so good. Mm -hmm. I have not m cried as much. Like, I laugh at the comics fairly often, like a, like a crazy person in public, but crying in public is not something I often do. Mr. Mm -hmm. Miracle is so emotional and powerful and really brings a different depth to the genre and the format. And the idea that he is writing a movie, a narrative on the screen with Eva DuVernay, like, what a great team. Like, New Gods, Mr. Miracle, Eva DuVernay, like, yes. Now, New yes. Gods, of course, is the 70s sci-fi universe created by Jack Kirby over at DC. Uh, you will also remember Jack Kirby's name from everything important, but also the upcoming Eternals. In this, we're going to do two of everything era of comic book movies. Uh, but he, that's just what he did. He was like, make a universe here, make a universe there, deities here, pantheon there. And New Gods is one of his signature creations over at DC. Um, major characters from it being Mr. Miracle, Big Barda, and a little guy named Darkseid. Now, why I think this is the perfect pairing is Tom King was able to modernize the New Gods, which sounds ironic, but he was able to make these very not digestible characters characters instantly digestible even and then newer gods. even newer the newest gods but Eva DuVernay's visual aesthetic her her framing her style her sense of like you need someone willing to go there you need someone without their visual imagination to do the so new the gods. combination of those two minds and those two flavors and that universe it's I can already see it and that seems per I cannot be more excited this this actually jumped to my number three most anticipated announced comic book movie oh wow of yeah. all the comic book movies it is now Spider-Man Far From Home a little bias Joker New Gods, and then the rest of comic book movies. Dorian, yeah. what about you? What no, about like, I'm pretty excited about this because the, I get just the news that, that she's pairing with him. I was, I thought this movie was not dead, but, like, we haven't heard anything about it in a yeah, while. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, DC, uh, they they have a few things in the works that are, like, either in pre-production or not in development or also I was like, what's going on with this New Gods? What's going on? So we finally got some confirmation of that. And I'm just excited because I'm not too familiar with, um, I'm not too familiar with Tom King, but I do love, I love all of Ava's work. And even though, like, Wrinkle and didn't get the the best reaction even like i still think it's like the movie's still geared, geared geared towards kids i think like what she did visually with that movie 
astounding. And I still think like that was that was her first like big budget blockbuster type mm-hmm. movie. So she was she's still like learning as she goes because she was originally just a publicist. So she's learning as like she goes throughout her filmography. So I think that was a a, a bump yeah, in the road. Yeah, real good, real quick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. She learns as she goes. So she took what um, um, she's going to take what she learned from Rico in Time. She has a fantastic writer with her, and then she's just going to without cussing F and kill mm-hmm. the game with this movie. I'm so excited about it because I'm I'm right now I'm watching when they see us. It took me a while like I've been pushing oh, it I'm pushing scared it back. to start because yeah, yeah, I'm gonna exactly. cry forever. Yeah, I, I didn't want to ruin my weekend just because <laughs> like I started watching it yesterday. I got I got mad, like you get physically mad just about like what's going on. So like the story she's able to tell I think she'll be able to do like and I also feel like her odd like the what she does best is create content for old like older people, I guess not like like older mm-hmm. fans. So I think this is gonna be right up her alley this for. This Dorian thinks we are. No, no, I mean, not, uh, older, inclu- <laughs> older, older, including me, like, like okay. how Wrinkle in Time, w- like, was, f- like, geared towards, <laughs> geared towards kids, I think. He just watched Big you Lebowski. Yeah, 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 grown up, not, <laughs> not older, grown up, grown up. I'm, I'm technically a grown up, barely, but, you know. <laughs> Ain't we all technically grown up? Now, I love your question. Uh, what was the, the, the idea of putting... Oh, yeah. What's your favorite off the wall? Well, first, I, I just gotta say, I did, this is off topic, but did, did y'all see LeVar Burton actually said, when they see us, is as important to watch as Roots was? No, I didn't see That's, that. Well, it doesn't get a bigger wow. endorse than that. Okay, it's, but but it's yeah, it's a must watch. Like everybody has to watch it. But yeah, back to what were you saying? But I love that. Like she's just like I'm gonna do this and that and this and now space epic. Um, so what off the wall team up? Since this part of my favorite thing about this is that I just did not see it coming at all. Even though maybe I should have. What's your favorite? Like what would be the off the wall partnership you want to see on a DC movie or any comic? Book oh, movie? A DC. Oh, okay. I was just thinking in any movie I was gonna do Brian Michael Bendis. I have two options. Okay. Brian Michael Bendis with uh. Ryan Coogler for a Miles Morales live action movie. Oh. Oh. Or, and, and I'll, I'll have Ryan Coogler in mind again. So, Dwayne McDuffie and Ryan Coogler for a static shock live oh, action movie. So with your boy, with heart, your boy Dorian. Dorian as the, as, as, the lead. as, as Virgil, Virgil Hawkins. Yes. Oh. Now, you say, like, um, you know, I'm just reading Swamp Thing. Then you do two of the best pairings. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Just, it's impressive. Just it's real sweaty. Shout out to the legendary Dwayne McDuffie. Gone way too soon, but we would have loved to see. That would have been dope. Mm. I've got. Gail Simone, mm. Olivia Wilde, Ooh. Squirrel Girl movie. <laughs> That's right. Gail Simone, Olivia Wilde, Squirrel Girl movie. If you haven't seen her magnificent book smart, do so and then read anything Gail Simone has written and you'll know that's a match made in Squirrel Girl heaven. That's the move. Dude, Gail Simone has such a, a like beautifully twisted mind. I'd be frightened. To and know Olivia what she Wilde did with like, Girl. gets that. It's perfect. <laughs> Squirrel Girl, make it happen, society. Oh my God, I would watch a whole X-Men Kids movie from Olivia Wilde. Uh, but that will be all for the future. Uh, what, in the meantime, what we are actually getting is Tom King and Ava DuVernay writing a new Gods movie. Uh, there's so much to be excited about in the world of comics. Uh, if you stick with us and head over to Giant Size tomorrow, we're gonna talk about possible MCU Keanu. Keanu Reeves, maybe circling the Eternals. It's just a rumor, but we're excited. A freaking Avengers Square Enix game finally getting announced at E3, so you'll never see Corey or me again. Uh, the new trailer is out for the DC Vertigo movie, The Kitchen. Yeah, it's a comic book movie. Uh, Swamp Thing is out this week. You have sent us your Twitter questions and way more, uh, probably including Corey advising bad life advice. I just make sure the balance is there with Amy's <laughs> eternal goodness. I just gotta make sure the kids know how to stay on the out and up. <laughs> <laughs> or the opposite of that. <laughs> uh, Dorian, thank you so much for joining us no again. No problem. I'm always at the office. You guys can find me on Twitter, Dorian Parks and Rec. I'll tag Collider if you if you want to tag us. I'm Collider's video social media manager as well. So hit me up on the Twitters. Hit us up. Um, thank you guys for having me. I love this new 20-minute iteration because I can barely <laughs> get my little two cents in and then get me out of here. So like I said, have me on, any, on any time, guys. I, I'm here now. I love it. Excellent. Thank you so much. And until next week, stay, stay sweaty. sweaty.